Good noon to everyone. Uh, today I'm going to share about the background, current status, as well as issues and concerns about genetically modified organism golden rice. Uh, this will be the flow of my presentation. Uh, so uh, what is GMO golden rice? It was genetically modified, um, intended to create beta-carotene. Uh, beta-carotene is a precursor of vitamin A as a solution to vitamin A deficiency. Golden rice was developed uh, for about 30 years now, uh, starting in 1990. Uh, the first version was uh, using genes of Erwinia uredobora plus uh, genes of daffodils, uh, ornamental plants in the temperate countries. But it's very low uh, beta-carotene content. It's more of a scientific uh, success rather than a developmental uh, success with uh, uh, practical applications uh, because it is uh, not uh, very applicable at the moment. So they developed uh, over the decade uh, of golden rice to uh, using uh, uh, three microorganisms uh, genes, Agrobacterium, Pantotoya, and E. coli, and using genes from corn to come up with this uh, version two of golden rice. And then it was uh, later crossed onto uh, locally grown uh, varieties in the Philippines as well as in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, it has to be mentioned that the level of beta-carotene of golden rice is uh, uh, very low. Uh, the first one, uh, it is estimated that uh, somebody has to eat 9 kilograms of golden rice. Second version, still it is very low at 3.57 microgram per gram of beta carotene. In terms of the history of golden rice, developments started in 1991 to year 2000 by Ingo Potricos from uh, Switzerland and Peter Bayer from Germany. And the development has uh, incurred about 130 million US dollars initially. And uh, more recently, uh, from 2010, a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with uh, in two tranches, uh, one was uh, 10.2 million US dollars, and the second one, 2017 to 2022, that is until next year, 18 million US dollars. International Rice Research Institute uh, is slated to develop golden rice until commercialization in Bangladesh and in the Philippines. In the Philippines, uh, confined trials started in 2011, and uh, there has been continuous development all throughout with the disruption in 2013 when farmers and uh, consumers uprooted the golden rice uh, experimental stage, uh, experimental farm in uh, Pili Camarines Sur in southern Luzon in the Philippines. It has been crossed to Philippine Seed Board RC82. Uh, and uh, in 2019, uh, this has already been approved uh, for field testing in direct use in the Philippines. In Bangladesh, uh, the Golden Rice 2 was uh, crossbred with uh, Dan 29, and the first field trial in 2016 uh, amounted to 10 microgram per gram beta carotene content of the GMO Golden Rice in Bangladesh. But there are very uh, scant data because they are very secretive in the data, both in the Philippines as well as in Bangladesh. Uh, in the Philippines, there is no more restrictions. Uh, as I said, the, the direct use for food feed and processing has been approved in the Philippines in December 10, 2019. And commercial release or use has been approved in the Philippines in July 21, uh, 2021, just a couple of uh, months ago. And uh, currently, our government in the Philippines is planning to do pilot production in seven provinces. Uh, IRI was uh, not straightforward in the uh, application in the Philippines for the uh, uh, direct use as well as uh, commercial release. They tried to uh, go first into countries where rice is not a staple food. They went to and applied in Australia and New Zealand, Canada and in the United States in 2018 for um, approval of golden rice. And it was approved in those countries of course, it is understandable that there is less rigor 
into their assessment because first uh, they don't grow much rice uh, in the US in the southern part only and they don't eat much rice also. Uh, rice is not a staple food. So it's just only to pressure the Philippines that other countries have already approved uh, golden rice. Looking at the uh, dynamics and degradation of golden rice, beta-carotene is affected by storage, by cooking, and with the uh, availability of fats in the diet of individuals. So that uh, in the storage, about 13% per month uh, uh, degrades uh, it when it is stored. And cooking, uh, there's degradation of 24% uh, after cooking. And uh, the availability of non-fats of fats or non-fats uh, determines the uh, bioavailability. That means if there is fats, uh, they can absorb much uh, beta-carotene. If there's no fats, uh, the absorption is questionable. Using this data of 1.63 microgram per gram after storage of three months and cooking, my computation is that uh, an individual would need 4.4 kilogram of cooked rice per day for a child to get all the vitamin A requirements from golden rice. For adults, it's uh, the re requirement would be 8.8 .8 kilogram cooked rice per capita per day. If we only uh, can compute the uh, availability of uh, beta-carotene at this uh, uh, amount of 1.63 uh, and the normal consumption of uh, uh, 0.33 kilogram per capita per day, that's the uncooked rice, that would mean that uh, Golden rice would only be supplying 18% of the vitamin A requirement uh, per capita. In this case, it is very minimal. So in that case, that uh, brings us to look at for alternative uh, sources of uh, uh, beta-carotene and vitamin A. Uh, in this case, um, golden rice uh, is uh, 3.57 beta-carotene microgram per gram. Uh, drumstick leaves or moringa olifera has 19 times uh, to that of the golden rice. Uh, edible jute is 33 times of uh, uh, golden rice. So these are the beta carotene content and these are uh, the red uh, and uh, in parentheses um, numbers are the uh, times how much uh, higher than golden rice. So naturally occurring food uh, are much higher in vitamin A than the genetically modified golden rice. Additional things, uh, many green and leafy vegetables actually have uh, high uh, beta-carotene. Carrots, sweet potato leaves, uh, and many, many more are uh, readily available sources and safer sources of beta-carotene. Actually, um, if you using that data, uh, previous uh, slide, if you were to get all the vitamin A requirements from golden rice, somebody has to uh, take uh, in or eat uh, 1.84 microgram per gram uh, for a child and uh, 3.66 uh, uncooked rice for an adult. If it is cooked, somebody has to uh, eat 8.8 uh, .8 kilogram uh, uh, compared to uh, squash, uh, moringa, carrots, and edible jute and sweet potato, orange tubers, uh, which has a uh, much uh, higher one. These are units are grams, while the golden rice is in kilograms. The conversion per, uh, rate here is um, 12 beta carotene will result into one retinol. Retinol is the, another term for vitamin A. This is the finished product that is needed by the body. So, uh, looking at the broader uh, framework or broad the, the structure of uh, vitamin A deficiency, vitamin A, de VAD, vitamin A deficiency, the three major approaches for addressing uh, or solving vitamin A deficiency is food diversification uh, using the data that I've shown in the previous two slides, food fortification using the noodles uh, with uh, fortified with vitamin A, margarine with vitamin A and other food systems, and uh, supplementation, that is the so-called uh, injecting uh, children with uh, severe vitamin A deficiency. In fact, in a uh, study in uh, Africa, uh, beta carotene rich orange uh, plus sweet potato uh, being fed to school children had shown that there is an alleviation of vitamin A uh, status of those children addressing vitamin A deficiency. So these are 
uh, highlighting that we really don't need vitamin A golden rice. Moving on into the topic of the risks of golden rice, uh, the number one problem of golden rice is uh, uh, seed contamination. Uh, that uh, local varieties may be contaminated through voluntary uh, growing of uh, GMO uh, rice leftovers in the field, seed mixing during handling and uh, drying, or cross pollination. Uh, even uh, rice uh, breeders uh, contend or ag uh, agree that there is 10% cross pollination chances of golden rice. But seed mixing and uh, volunteer seeds can be more problematic. In fact, contamination of uh, rice uh, with the GMO has uh, happened in 2006, as well as uh, just uh, a couple of months ago, uh, June 2021. Uh, GMO contaminated rice uh, was detected in the European Union from rice imported from India. The risks to human health of the golden rice is the so-called unintended uh, effects of uh, golden rice due to genetic engineering because of rearrangement of the genes. If there is a rearrangement of the genes, there may be the different amino acids that are being produced and different um, uh, protein that are produced and it may be caused for allergenicity, even carcinogenicity or other adverse impacts to human health. The situation is there is incomplete information about uh, the GMO golden rice. It is not, not tested preclinically to animals and there is no other safety assessment other than the way thing that they have done that is comparing the genes of the GMO to that of um, database in com computers, but these are not toxicological data. Therefore, they are not reliable uh, and incomplete data. In that case, humans are becoming guinea pig in golden rice. Actually, another uh, issue is that the very expensive uh, uh, needs in developing golden rice, it needs 75 to 150 million US dollars to develop one GMO. While in the development of uh, a conventional breeding, uh, somebody needs only one million US dollars to develop one new variety. While for us who are working with farmers, uh, the cost of breeding one new farmer bred variety is almost none. Just only the um, uh, uh, sweat and labor of the farmers. The regulatory issue here is that there is no bicep pillow in the Philippines where we account for the liability and redress. When something happens in the farm, who will be responsible? Uh, is it the biotech company? Is it the seed who planted the GMO uh, seeds? Or is it the government that uh, approved the uh, GMO? There is no law to specify those uh, uh, liability. That also is true when it happens to consumers. Actually, in reality, uh, if you want to unmask the players of golden rice, uh, golden rice is uh, owned by Syngenta, a uh, big or a giant uh, seed and biotech corporation. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is a philanthropic organization, but actually it's more of philanthropic capitalism because they are investing also uh, in big uh, uh, amounts for those that generate money that were subjected to GMOs. They have used ERI to uh, project an image of neutral reserves and Phil Rice and Bangladesh Rice Research Institute to appear as national reserves. So the real objective of Golden Rice is to eliminate safety regulations of resistance against GMOs to pave the way towards mainstreaming Golden Rice and other GMOs so that it is a Trojan horse. And the outcome will be uh, the biotech uh, companies will become uh, full control of seeds, agriculture, and food. To conclude, uh, there are health and environmental risks of golden rice that the solution should be worse than the illness it is intended to cure, uh, that there are many uh, effective uh, available sources of vitamin A. Therefore, uh, there is absolutely no need for GMO and golden rice. And a different tone, GMOs are tool for corporate control of agriculture and food. Thank you for your attention.